Hi everyone, this is Avinash from SOAS. So today in this video we see how we integrate SOAP UI with Workshop 35. Now this is the second part of the integration guide. So I highly recommend you to watch the first part before watching this. Now let me quickly summarize what we did in the first part. We created a SOAP project, we created a test suite, we created a test case and uh, we we use the sample web service for converting computer units. So you see the left side is the request and the right side is the response. Now the data is uh, coming from your project variables as you can see below here. We have four uh, project variables out of which the first three is for input and the last one is for output. So now we have pretty much set up a SOAP UI test case that is ready to be integrated with Workshop Certified. Now let's move on to the uh, further steps. Now before we begin to the integration, I just want to uh, give a highlight on some of the prerequisites that you uh, need to achieve this integration. So the first one is SOAP UI should be installed in the same machine as Workshop Certified. Now you need Workshop Certified 10 or more because it does not work with older versions of uh, Certified unless there is a specific patch added to that. The next one is you have to configure your path environment system variable with your SOAP UI installation uh, bin folder. So in my computer, this is my path. So if you're looking uh, to do this, you can check online to how to configure your path uh, system variables and add this to that. So let me quickly show you how that is done. Uh, right click, now I'm using Windows 10, so this is for Windows 10. So when you go to Explorer properties, advanced system settings, you see there is environment variables and under system variable section you have path. So when you open it, you see there are a lot of uh, things that is already added. So you see this is mine, my installation path of SOAP UI. So this should be there. Now this is really necessary uh, for certified to fetch your SOAP UI installation path. So highly recommend you to do this. Then the last one is you should have a test case ready in SOAP UI to integrate with Workshop Certify, which we already have. Now let's move on to the Certify steps here. Now let me summarize before we uh, begin. So what you have to do here is uh, within Certify, there are not a lot many steps that uh, that you want to do here to achieve this integration, thanks to uh, Workshop Certify's developers for making it so easy. Now the first step is to create an application in Workshop Certify with interface type SOAP UI. Then you have to create a window in the same application and then create process, have some steps to send and receive data and you're done and you execute it, you see the result. And then the logs can also be found in this uh, path in Certify app folder. Okay, so let's uh, get into action and see how this works. So the first step is to create an application. Now in my case, I already have a project created, so I'm not going to create it again. Now I have to go to my applications and create a new application. So you already know this is pretty much basic. So I'm not going to go too deep into that. So right click new application. So you have to give a uh, give any name. So I think SOAP UI is relevant. SOAP UI and version will be 1.0. Then you have to uh, share this in order to give others access to use this application. Now you see that from Workshop 3510 onwards, you see there is a new entry under interfaces called SOAP UI. So you have to check this and click OK. Now I already done it, so you can see uh, I already have created the application earlier. Now when you have created this for the first time, you should not find any windows here. So you have to also create a window because without a window, you cannot perform this integration. So right click new window and give the same name SOAP UI and I'll use the same thing here as well. And the interface is SOAP UI, the class is project. There's only one class, so you can use the same thing. I copy it and uh, in the attribute value, I paste the same thing. It doesn't really matter what you give here and you click OK. So once you do that, you can see the new window created here. So we have already finished uh, step one and step two. So now we have to go and create a process. Now you go to the processes tab here. You see that I already have created a process. So now you can see that the window that you have created, you have used it here. So that's the reason you have to create a window. Now for SOAP UI interface, you don't have uh, many actions that you find for the other interfaces. You just have only five. So you have to load the project. So for that you use load and you have project variables, you run and then you do a property transfer. So this is very easy. So the first thing that you have to do is load your SOAP UI project. Now to load your SOAP UI project, Certify should uh, get access to your project 
So that is being done with this URL, this path. So your project file name. So get to get your SOAP UI project path, what you have to do is go to your SOAP UI project folder. So this is my project folder, double click on it. And in the summary here, project summary, you can find this path. So copy this path and paste it here. Okay. So once you're done, the next step is to um, paste your uh, installation path of your SOAP UI. If you're not configured your path variable, you have to do this, but I highly recommend you to do this in all cases. Then you need two more things, uh, your test suite name and test case name. So in our case, the test suite name is test suite itself and also the test case name is test case itself. So I'm giving the same name. You can see it here, test suite, test case, okay. Now, how this integration works is, you're loading the project from certify, you're passing the data from certify to the project variables of SOAP UI, and then finally you're getting the value from the project variables to certify. So this is all very simple. Now what you have to do is, you already know that we have four project variables in SOAP UI, three of which are input. So I'm using three steps to give the input. Now you see that the name is value and the value is one, two, three, four, five, six. So here the value is the project variable name. Here also it is the same thing. And you have to give the same uh, name and case, otherwise this will not work. Now I've done the same thing for other two variables also. Now very important thing is whatever data you give here does not do any change or make any change in the SOAP UI. So you can feel free to give any data here. And in the future, you would variableize this and pass the data from the record set. Okay, so once you load the project, you have to initialize the project variables of SOAP UI and then uh, execute the SOAP UI project. Now, execution is very simple here. You just see a set timeout. Now, in case you want to have a delay between uh, executions, so you can set some timeout here. In our case, it's just one set of data, so I'm just uh, quickly executing it by not giving anything here, so it's zero. Then the last step is property transfer. You already know that from the previous video. Once you execute the request, it sends you a re uh, response. Then finally you capture what you need and you push it to a project variable. So in this property transfer, the result value is not your uh, project variable name, but it is your property transfer name here. So this is very important. So you're performing a transfer from certify itself. But in my case, I've named both same to avoid confusion. So now this is an output from certify. So I have chosen a variable called result and which is a number. So I just choose result and let me set the format to standard and save it. So this is all. So first I load the project. I initialize the project variable with some data. I execute it. And finally I transfer the value from SOAP UI to certify into a variable. So now let's execute this. And you don't have to have your SOAP UI open because we are not going to execute it from SOAP UI. You can close it, but uh, it doesn't matter. It still works. So let me execute it step by step. So first it loads the project. Then initialize the, these variables and then you execute the SOAP UI project. Now this can take some time depending on your internet connection and type of web service. And you won't see any UI because this works in the protocol layer and not the application UI layer. So you don't see anything happening just like your other interfaces. So now you can see that the execution is complete and now finally the uh, property transfer. You can see now that uh, SOAP UI returned 120.5625, which is the correct value from SOAP UI and it is stored in your result variable. So this is how it works. This is just a sample test case. Now, if you can also find your SOAP UI logs under certify uh, app data folder. So to navigate to that, just go to start run and uh, type this app data. And then you go to Worksoft. And then you have SOAP UI here. And then you have a temp folder, TMP. 
and you see that you have two files. Now this is nothing but your SOAP UI logs. So if you open the first one, you can see uh, the request and the response from SOAP UI. You can see the same thing that you see in SOAP UI. Now this can be used for debug, uh, debugging just, ca just in case that you want to know what happened internally. If everything is fine, you can uh, use this for debugging. And then also for the property transfer. So you can see that it returned this value. What timestamp, everything, you have it here. Now let's say uh, there is a failure in SOAP UI. So how certify behaves, it is going to fail in certify as well. So let's put a failure here intentionally to see how it uh, looks when you execute from certify. So let me put a condition here. Uh, let's say I want to find out if this uh, response has content one, two, three, four, which it will not have because you don't see anything one, two, three, four here. So you see it already failed here before even execution. So I'm just going to save it now, save all projects. Now I'm going to execute my test case again. You see now SOAP UI, uh, you know, the logs are already cleared. This is done by Workshop Certify because it's a new execution. So now you can see the execution failed, which is the correct one because it says contains missing token in response. So this is what you should see. And uh, if you see the log here in the background, you can see that now it created just only one log because the property transfer will not happen because if the execution fails, the property transfer will not happen. So you just have only one log with failed here. So just by seeing this file name, you understand that the previous execution failed, okay? So this is how you integrate uh, SOAP UI with Workshop Certify. Thank you guys. See you all in a new video.